Welcome to the Open Dental webinar on daily reports. Today we're going to talk about the reports found in the daily section of the standard reports in Open Dental. Let's start off by making some general comments about these reports. If we go to the report section and then standard, you can see the daily reports here. Most of these reports you can run in a for a date range. And you'll notice that you have two calendars, one on the left and one on the right. The calendar on the left shows you your start date, and the calendar on the right shows you your end date. If I wanted to run this report for one particular date, maybe August 4th, I can click on August 4th on the left and August 4th on the right, and then when I ran this report, it would only give me the data for one day, August 4th. If I wanted to run it for a range, Let's say that I wanted to run the entire month of August. I could click on August 1st on the left-hand calendar and August 31st on the right-hand calendar, and then this would give me the entire month of August. If I needed more range, I can use these arrows to move back and forth, or I can also jump, if I click on the, the month here at the top, I can quickly jump to another month in the year, so I can run from January 1st to August 31st. Or if I want to jump years, if I click again into the year 2021, I can move to another year. This would run the report from January 1st, 2020 to August 31st, 2021. Now, another thing that you can do in um, just generally is you can restrict access to reports. Uh, if we go into the setup button up here at the top left, if I click on this, you'll notice you have a variety of tabs across the top for setup. I'm going to click the security permissions tab. And when I do, I'll notice that I have a drop down here for my user group. If I click this drop down, I can see all of the user groups that I've set up in my security section. If I click on a particular group, maybe my provider group, then for all of the reports where you see an X in the allowed column, that means that they are allowed to run that report. However, if I click on the X and remove those, then that user group is not allowed to run those reports. And I can do this for multiple groups. Lastly, if you're using clinics, you're able to restrict different particular users to certain clinics. Um, right now, I'm logged into a user that has access to all clinics. But if I were to log in as a different user, um, I'm going to log in as a user that is restricted to clinic A. So now when I go up to the reports and my standard, and if I click on a report, you'll notice that only Clinic A is available to this particular user. If I log in again as a user that has access to all clinics, if I go to Reports and Standard, let's try that report again. This time you'll see that this person has access to multiple clinics. They can highlight them, or if they want, they can click the All button if they want access to all clinics to run that information. So let's start talking about some particular reports. First off, we have the Adjustments Report. If we go over here to Reports and Standard and the Daily Adjustments Report, I can see that I can set my date range. I also have the ability to select individual providers. If I wanted to run the report only for one provider, I could select that provider. If I wanted multiple providers, I can hold down the control button and select more providers. Or I could just click the button for all and just that would run it for all of my providers. I have the same options for adjustment types. I can select one adjustment type. I can use my control button, holding it down to select multiple types if I like, 
or I can click the all button for all types. And then for clinics, same thing. I can run it for all my clinics, or I can choose individual clinics or combinations of clinics. When I click OK, that report is going to run for whatever date range, providers, adjustment types, and clinics that I've selected. Our next report in the daily section is the payments report. If we select the payment report, you'll be able to select a date range, select providers and clinics. On the left, you have the option to group the report by check. That's set by default if you group by check. You'll notice that each check will have one line in the report. Uh, for example, this check from Delta Dental is just one line. Uh, this is a multi-patient check. However, there's only one line item. Uh, there's an asterisk next to this patient's name, and that, that tells us that this is a representative patient, that there are more patients on that check. You'll notice, however, that the, there are two patients, Braden and Karen, which are in the same check, which are two separate line items, and that's because there are two separate providers for this check. You can also group by patient. If you group by patient, the report will look something like this where each patient will have their own line in the report. By default, you're going to show the providers separately in the report. However, if you uncheck this box, then you'll notice that for each line, you can have multiple providers on a line. If you take a look at James here, this line is for provider DB and provider FR. If you have patients that prepay for uh, treatment plan procedures, you can include those in the report by check checking the box here. There's also a checkbox up at the top toward the right to include unearned income. This box is normally checked by default. You'll notice that on a default report, you can have a line where there is a patient payment and no provider attached to it. However, if you uncheck that box, then those patient payments will not be shown in the report. For more options, you can show all of your insurance payments by checking the box, or if you only wanted to show some of them, you could select which insurance payment types you'd like to show. The same goes for patient payments. If you have multiple people entering in claims, you can select which group you'd like to show. The procedure report in the daily section allows you to select a date range select providers, select clinics. You can group the report by individual procedures, which is going to give you a list of patients that had a specific procedure performed, or you could group by procedure code. If you group by individual procedures, you're going to notice that each line will give you a particular procedure and a patient's name. If you group by code, You'll notice that each line is going to give you a particular procedure code and tell me how many of those procedures you performed. You also have the option to filter the report. For example, if I wanted to specify all the procedures that start with D1, Then Open Dental would go through the procedures and just select the codes that are in the D1000s. You can also get production from this. Open Dental will give you a report. At the bottom of the report will be a total of all of the, the fees for those procedures. The write-offs report allows you to select a date range, select providers, select clinics. 
You have three options. You can use the insurance payment date, the procedure date, or the initial claim date. Let's take a look at how each one of those looks. So we see Sally here. Sally Watkins had um, a date of service of February 1st. And so if we order the write-offs by procedure date, then all of the write-offs in the report will be by procedure date. We can also do the initial claim date. The claim for Sally was filed on February 17th. Or we can do by insurance payment date. And you can see that Sally's claim was paid on August 11th. Our next report in the daily section is the incomplete procedure notes report. This report shows all completed procedures with incomplete procedure notes or in procedure group notes. The, an incomplete procedure note is a procedure note that has uncompleted quotation notes in the note, sec, note text. If I run this report, I have the option to select clinics. I can select providers. I can group by procedure, by patient, or by date and patient. I'm going to select a date range. And click refresh. Now I can see I have three patients here that have incomplete procedures notes. If I right click on them, I can go to their chart. Here I can see Karen has an incomplete procedure note. If you look at the note, you'll notice that there are uncompleted quotation marks. It also has the an incomplete flag at the top. If I want to see procedures that have no notes for any procedure of the same day, I can click check this box and refresh. Or I can include procedures that have a note but is not signed. Our routing slips report is next. You can choose providers. You can choose clinics. You can print them for today or you can set a specific date. If you'd like to print all the reports for all of the operatories shown, you can click displayed. If you want to select a particular view and narrow down the number of operatories, you can come over here to the view section and select a different view. In which case, if you select displayed, only the operatories that are displayed will print their routing slips. The unfinalized insurance payment report will help you find payments that have not been finalized. You can filter by type, by clinics, by carriers. If you right click on a line, it gives you the option to go to that location and finalize the payment. Our last report in the daily section is the patient portion uncollected. If we select that report, we're able to put in a date range. We can also specify clinics. The patient portion uncollected report is going to show me uncollected patient balances of procedures that were completed within this date range. The uncollected patient portion is the remaining procedure balance after any partial payments, uh, insurance payments, insurance write-offs, and adjustments are applied. If I were to run this report for the 23rd of August, I would notice that I had a patient portion uncollected for James McPherson. If we go to James's account, we can see here that we've taken a check on the 23rd for $320. But if I double click into this payment, you'll notice that this payment is unallocated. Let's double click into it and attach it to a procedure. Now this payment is attached to a procedure. If we were to run this report again, then it would show up as blank. We do have one other report that's normally hidden in the daily section. We can find it by going up to Setup, and then 
In the daily section, we can scroll down to the net production detail daily. If we check that hidden box and we click OK, you'll notice that the net production detail daily report is now visible. So this report is going to list net production for providers um, in a particular date range. Uh, this is, report is useful for offices that use accrual accounting. Write-offs are going to be estimated on the data service, and any difference in the write-off is going to be reported on the insurance payment date. If I click into the net production detail daily report, I can select a provider or multiple providers. I can select clinics. I can print it for today, or I can select a date range. I can move back and forth between pay periods. So if I want to print the report for an entire pay period in the past, I can. And then I click OK, that will print the report. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. If you have any additional questions, please contact our support line at 503-363-5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com and make sure you're staying up to date on our latest training videos by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications.